Now some of the common views that are held between Christianity, Judaism and Islam using texts from the Bible. These texts from the Bible can also be correlated with texts from the Quran as we will see God willing. Monotheism, which is something that is professed by Jews, Christians, Muslims. But we're going to get into it a little more in detail. In the Torah or in the Old Testament, God says over and over again, uses these same wordings, but I'm going to use Isaiah 44 verse 6. I am the first and I am the last. And besides me there is no other God. I am the first, I am the beginning, I am the end, and besides me there is no other God. I am the only God. Using the New Testament, Mark chapter 12 verse 29. The Bible said, The Lord our God is one Lord. This is coming from the mouth of Jesus Christ Himself. The Lord our God is one. And in the Quran, we have the exact same phrase. He is God, the one and only. Which in Arabic is, Kul had. That say He is God, the one, the only. We are not saying anything different. We are saying the same things that have always been said from the Old Testament to the New Testament to the Quran. The message has not changed. Only people have changed the message. God's message is one. God does not change, therefore His message could not change. His religion could not change. His ways of life that He given, has given to humanity could not change. They must be the same. And as we see here, monotheism is an underlying fact that has been from the Old Testament to the New Testament to the Quran. We are not saying anything different. Prophets. Muslims believe and accept all the prophets mentioned in the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. We accept them. We accept all of the prophets without taking or adding any of them. Also with the miraculous birth of Jesus. Besides Christianity, Islam is the only religion on earth that accepts the miraculous birth of Jesus. We are one of the only religions that, that verify and use in our books to verify that Jesus was born of a Virgin Mary. This is something even the Jews themselves, they deny. But we as Muslims attest to this and defend not only Jesus but His mother Mary, peace be upon them, on this issue. Jesus is mentioned 25 times in the Quran. 25 times He is mentioned by name in the Quran. The highest honor of women in Islam. The highest woman in Islam, that title is given only to one woman and that is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And it is given to her in verse and chapter 19 of the Quran which is actually entitled after her. It is Surah Maryam or Surah Mary or chapter Mary of the Holy Quran. There is a whole chapter in the Quran devoted just to the mother of Jesus Christ Mary and she is given the highest status that can be given to a woman. She is known as the highest woman in the world, in history, was given to the status of Mary, the mother of Jesus, by Islam. Greetings. All the time you hear, you hear Muslims, they'll say to each other, when they greet each other, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be unto you, or peace be with you, or may you have peace. This is nothing new. This is not something we invented. This is not something that Muhammad, peace be upon him, invented. All the prophets had this same greeting that they used Peace be with you. And I'm going to give you some evidences, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Is in many times when Jesus would greet the people, he would say to them, Peace be unto you. There's many evidences over and over again in the New Testament. When Jesus would greet someone, he would greet them, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. This was a statement that he always used. This was a statement that was used by all the prophets. It only meant, May I you have peace. Now, another topic taking off of shoes, which is something a Muslim does not only in the mosque, he goes and he takes off his shoes because it is a sacred place, but even in his home, in his home where he prays, he takes off his shoes. Why does he take off his shoes? God ordered Moses to take off his shoes in Exodus 3 and 5. When he saw the burning bush, the first command God gave him was take off your shoes because you are standing on sacred ground. Put off shoes from your feet. Again, we see in Joshua 5 and 15. Muslims take off their shoes whenever they enter the mosque or ever whenever they enter into their homes. Whenever they enter into a place where they are going to worship God, they take off their shoes. Purification before prayer, which in Islam is known as wudu or ablution, which we make this ritual purification with water before we pray. Is this something new? Let's see. In Exodus 40, 30 and 31 and 32, Moses washed his feet. We see in Acts 21, 
verse 26. Saint Paul purified himself and then he went to the, to the temple. This is something that has been practiced by the Jews for centuries. Before they enter into the synagogues, they, they will wash themselves, purify themselves before they enter. So we have not invented anything new. We are just continuing the path in the example of the prophets. We are just continuing to follow the example of all the prophets. That we are doing the same thing. We have not invented anything new. Fasting. Muslims fast for 30 days during the month of Ramadan. For one month. We fast during the daylight hours in order to purify ourselves before God. Is this something new? Let's see. In Matthew 4 and 2 it is said that Jesus fasted for 40 days. He fasted for 40 days. This was something he was known to do to fast. He said some things can only be come through fasting and prayer. So fasting was a tradition of Jesus. Was a tradition of the prophets. So we have not invented anything new. Ramadan is nothing new. Ramadan is something that has been practiced by all the prophets. Taking time to purify themselves, to free themselves from the needs of this world in order to draw nearness unto God. This is something that has always been practiced. Now, this topic is one of the things that helped bring me to Islam. The issue of humbling and how Muslims pray. You see it all the time. Whenever they mention Muslims and talk about Islam, they will show Muslims in prayer. Most of the time going into the prostration. And everyone wonders why. Why do you have to bump your head on the floor? What is it necessary? I can't just talk to God. Why do I need to bump and bow my head on the floor? Is this something new? Let's see. Humbling while praying by bowing heads to the ground. We see in Genesis chapter 17 verse 3. Moses bowed his head. Abraham fell on his face. Jesus fell on his face and prayed in Matthew 26 and 39. This is nothing new. This is something Abraham, Moses, Jesus, all the prophets did. They prostrated their face on the ground in a semblance of su supreme submission to God. The lowest point you can reach on the earth is with your face on the ground. And in that position, you are praising God who is the most high. It is the most supreme form of worship. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that a slave is closest to his Lord when he is in that position of prostration. Because he has lowered himself to the lowest position he can come to in this earth in order to praise the Supreme Creator who is the Most High. We are not inventing anything new. This is one thing that I saw. I used to pray like this as a Christian. Even though I didn't know what I, I was doing a traditional Muslim prayer. And when I first encountered Muslims and saw them pray, this was one of the things that led me to see that they are not doing anything new. This is something that I've always read about in the Bible. Not bowing to statues and images. Not giving serenity. Not giving worship. Not giving adoration to any type of images. In, in Exodus, it says, Thou shalt not make any graven images. This is the second commandment. Number one, thou shalt have no other God before me. First commandment. Or no other God with me. Or no other God beside me. And number two, you should not worship any graven images. Nothing that you create with your hands should you give adoration or worship to. Muslims, do not bow to statues, images, or anything except God. We do not give that which is reserved for God. We do not give any of the worship or adoration that is reserved to God alone to anything except God. Decoration of trees. This is a big thing during Christmas time. You go, you cut down the tree, you bring it in your house, and you decorate it. It is forbidden in the Bible, in Jeremiah, chapter 10, verses 2 through 5. It says, Cursed are those who venture into the wilderness and cut down a tree and bring it into their homes and decorate.